In today's video, let me show you how to edit your images like Mind's Eye Photography. If you don't know who this is, I would highly recommend to look it up. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the description of this video. And now let's begin. So here we have opened up the raw file in Lightroom. We are not going to use a single raw file. Instead, we want to merge an HDR because we want to have a higher dynamic range to be able to recover details from the highlights like that street lamp and the shadows like that building in the distance. So what we want to do first, we want to select all the images down below, right click, choose photo merge and then choose HDR. I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just keeping the auto align setting checked. And once we have set up this, just hit the merge button. Doing this, Lightroom will create a new image, which is this one right here. And now is an HDR file. Before we start working on the exposure, we want to crop this image. It's not really even. So I want to work on that first. Going to try and straighten this image a bit. And I'm also going to crop it quite heavily. I want to crop out the windows on both sides because those are just a distraction. I want to keep that sign with the shadow on the left side. I think something like this looks pretty nice. Now you will notice there are a few things still visible in this image like this window right here. I'm going to clean this up at a later point with Photoshop. Unfortunately, we cannot do that in Lightroom, as well as fixing some of those skewed lines you can see all over this image. However, with this image cropped, we can now work on the exposure. So let's start in the basic panel and we want to change the profile first. For this image, I'm going with Adobe Landscape. As always, this will bring up the saturation a notch and it will also help restoring some details from the darkest areas. Now looking at the histogram or just looking at this image, you can see it's still very, very dark. To fix that, I'm going to bring up the exposure until I get to a point where it just looks a bit better. I actually think that's a bit too much. I want to bring it down just a bit. Right here looks good. Immediately we can see a lot more things in this image. However, we are not done yet. Increasing the overexposure will lead to some problems with those lights. But since we are working on an HDR file, that's not a big deal. We can simply pull down the highlights and thus we will get back details even from those bright areas. Again, this makes the whole image a little bit darker, but we are just continue balancing the exposure by bringing up the shadows. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks. It might still be a little bit too dark. I just think it looks better with this gloomy look being more on the darker side rather than on the brighter side. What I want to do as well is to bring up the whites just to add a bit of punch to this image, but that's looking really good for now. So let's work our way through the present settings. I want to bring up the texture, introducing more detail to the smallest things of this image. And I am going to drop the clarity, which kind of has an opposite effect, making overall everything a little softer. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze to introduce a glowing look just like this. Bringing down the dehaze like this will also make the image brighter, so that might be helpful to know. Then next up, let's bring down the vibrance. And at this point, I'm quite happy with how the basic image is looking. We can compare to before real quick. We can see it's a lot brighter. We have a lot more details. What's bothering me at the moment is the colors. This is because the white balance is a little bit off. However, I don't want to change the white balance for the image globally. Instead, we want to do that by using a bunch of masks. So let's do that. Head into the masking panel. And first I'm going to select the sky. Unfortunately, Lightroom does have a few problems to uh, selecting the sky, but it should work fine anyway. I want to invert that sky selection. So I'm just checking the checkbox right here. And with that mask, I am going to bring down the temperature. And thus we are reducing that ugly yellow color cast in the foreground. I'm going to drop it quite heavily. Just around here looks great. Now the image is much more neutral, but we can do a few more things to this mask. 
I also want to bring down the tint, getting rid of any purple color cast. Then I want to bring up the clarity. This will add some nice punch to this image. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. This again will introduce some more subtle glow. It almost looks like an autumn glow effect, which I think looks great here. Now let's create a new mask. Again, I'm going with the sky selection. This time I want to work on the sky. However, I'm going to the white balance settings and I'm bringing up the temperature, making the sky just a little bit warmer. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the tint to remove that purple color cast. Just around here. So we have some nice contrast between those warmer clouds and the dark blue sky. I'm also going to bring up the saturation and we can bring up the contrast to make it a little more dramatic up there. Wonderful. At this point, that tower in the distance is a little too dark. I want to change that. Let's create a new mask and hopefully the object selection can do this. I'm just going to brush over the tower and hope for the best. This did work quite well. So what I want to do here is to bring up the exposure, introducing more brightness, making this tower just a little more visible. I'm also going to bring up the shadows for the same effect. And maybe let's even push the temperature and reduce the tint. Wonderful, that looks great. Now I'm still not quite happy with the sky. So let's create another sky selection. This time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the very top of the sky, just like this. And what I want to do with this selection is I want to make the bottom part of the sky brighter than the top. To do this, I'm going to raise the exposure. And by doing this, I'm just creating a very cool light effect. We can also introduce some warmth by bringing up the white balance temperature once more. I think this looks great. Enough for the sky, let's work on the foreground. Here I'm just going to use a linear gradient. Let's create one like this. And what I want to do here is to create some kind of vignetting effect by dropping the exposure. The foreground isn't that important and by darkening this area, we are leading the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. And we're just creating a nice framing of the whole scene. Then we can also introduce some glow around the street lights. So I'm going to use a radial gradient for that. I'm making it slightly wider than high, just like this. I'm going to place it over the center of the street light and I'm going to raise the blacks to introduce glow. And for even more glow, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. That looks awesome. Then one final mask, I'm going to use another radial gradient cover pretty much the center part of this street. And in here, I want to bring up the exposure. I also want to bring up the shadows. And I also want to bring up the clarity. So this creates a very nice focus point for us to look at with the brightest spot of the image being right here in the center. Perfect. Now, one more thing I noticed is due to merging this HDR, there are a few weird things going on in the background, as you can see here. This is again something I want to fix in Photoshop. So don't worry about that for the moment. Also, I think we're done with the masking. I can show you the image from before. You can see the basic adjustments did look good, but after the masking, it just looks so much better with the fixed color cast and the adjusted contrast. Now let's do some color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer and we want to work on the hue first. What this means is I'm going to bring down the yellow hue. This will turn all those yellow lights more into the orange color range, which I just like more for this medieval city. I'm also going to bring down the blue hue, introducing some more blue to the sky since this is a very purplish looking sky right now. For the same effect, we can also bring down the purple hue. All right, then let's head over into the saturation tab. Here, I want to bring down the orange saturation a little bit. And I'm also going to bring down the yellow saturation. I feel like this is something very, very important if you want to get close 
to the style of mind's eye photography since in his images he usually doesn't really work with that much saturation I have the feeling. It works better to just bring it down a notch. Now what I want to do as well is to head into the split toning settings right here in the color grading tab and just apply a little bit of split toning. For the highlights we want to set up a warm hue somewhere around here, bring up the saturation quite a bit, that looks great. Then I do want to add some color balance by using the midtones and the shadows to introduce coldness to this image. So let's start with the midtones, set up the hue to something cold and bring up the saturation again. And let's repeat that for the shadows, go with the cold hue and bring up the saturation. However, just a tiny amount should be enough for the shadows. And finally, what we can do as well is to go into the calibration tab and just bring down the blue primary hue and push the saturation a little bit. That looks wonderful. Now I do think we could use some vignetting on top as well. So let's go into the effects panel and just bring down the vignetting slider right here. This works really good as a framing for this scene because the borders of this image are really not that important. Finally, we can apply a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. So here I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the detail, hold on the alt key while adjusting the masking slider and then introduce more sharpening. Done. So this is the image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments and you can see compared to before this looks so much better. As I said earlier I want to clean up this image and fix a few of those skewed lines using a bit of Photoshop since we can't really reliably do that in Lightroom. So what I want to do next is right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And since this might be a little tricky to fix, I'm going to hit Ctrl J to have a backup layer. And I'm going to start this by using the Remove tool. Let's first get rid of a few things on the sides. So right here in the back, you can see a few things that got messed up with the HDR merging process. Smaller details don't really are that visible. So I don't think it's a big deal. I still want to paint over those black strange dots. Okay, let's see what Photoshop is doing here. Much, much cleaner. Now I also want to fix this window in the distance. I'm going to use the lasso selection for that. Let's just select this strange looking object right here and then use the generative fill and hit generate. Perfect, that looks great. What I want to do next is to merge those skewed lines. So let's merge everything into a new layer hitting Shift, Control, Alt, E. And then how can we fix that? Let me try hitting Control, T. And I'm going to right click in that picture and choose this thought. Then I'm picking a corner point, let's say down below. And I'm going to straighten the image this way. This is something I really not like doing, but we need to fix that. Otherwise this image looks stretch. Okay, let's apply it like this for now. The sides do look much better this way. However, the tower now is quite heavily leaning to the right. I wanna see if I can mask out this tower. I'm going to create a layer mask, then grab the brush tool by pressing B, set the foreground color to black. And now I'm just going to brush over the tower. This will reveal the tower from the previous version where we didn't have applied the transformation. This honestly works better than expected. I just need to find the right point to stop somewhere over those rooftops. That looks pretty nice. Of course there are a few things which we want to get rid of so I'm setting the foreground color to white again and paint back in over those strange looking areas. Perfect. And at this point we are done editing this image. So as you can see you can do quite a lot of cool things with Lightroom but unfortunately you cannot fix everything, maybe in the future however. I hope this video was helpful and interesting as always. If you have questions left feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.